Um, first, Walter Ryan um, is in the hospital at Floyd Memorial um, following surgery, and so we ask you to keep him in your parish. Also, a longtime member, really a person who grew up here, um, Dorothy Galloway passed away this morning um, at Floyd Memorial Hospital in the emergency room. Um, there are no arrangements yet, but uh, things will be sent out to the email. But we ask you to keep Dot's family in your prayers. Um, confirmation is not meeting today. Um, the Lenten Bible study does continue on Wednesday, and the book study continues uh, for the next two weeks, um, starting on Thursday. Um, and please be in prayer for people coming up on mission trips. Pastor Hiley, Bob Gates, Skipper Trotsky, Mike Scroggins, and Stephanie. Uh, uh, Skip Petrosky and uh, Stephanie Petrosky as well. Uh, there's a bodacious hoedown that is going to take place in the Fellowship Hall on March 22nd, and the third annual Spring has sprung craft and vendor fair is set for next Sunday. Um, please take note of that. And there's an announcement about Easter flowers in 2016 scholarships, as well as a bunch of eating out opportunities. And if there's anything that people at St. Mark's United Church of Christ do well, well, there are other things we do better, but eating out is one of the things we do very, very well. Um, actually eating at home, eating out, eating here. Um, the church has known how the church, people who dine together, pray together. Um, and I know that's not a statement, but I just made it. Okay, yesterday, wow, and when we share about the labs. Yesterday, I don't know exactly who the number 
on that when you have it open? 75, huh? See, what? Do you see what I put up with? 75. It was over 600, wasn't it? Wendy won't be talking to you this morning. Betty Bartelt for the wonderful entertainment she provides to the, in the, to the guests in the Fellowship Hall. We have Allison and her crew in the Kid Zone. We have amazing crews in the dental and vision clinics. Uh, we have the service and door coordinators who help make the flow. Our stylists, I think there are three of them here today. Marlene, Sandy, and Kim, are you here? I know you can't stand, you know. <laughs> But they, uh, they stand on their feet in one place all day long to help folks uh, get haircuts and, and walk out feeling pretty not good about themselves. Shepherds who move the guests around and help them get everything they need, not only from a physical need, but also from an emotional and, uh, and mental health and spiritual needs. Uh, during the training every year, Wendy and I talk to you guys about our goal, which is that people will come and they will get their needs met from a physical standpoint, but that we want each one of our guests met with dignity and respect and to walk out here with feeling loved. And St. Mark's, you did that quite well yesterday. And uh, I would like to thank you, Wendy, and I would like to thank you. There's lots of great stories from yesterday. Please share them with one another. Share them with us. Um, this is a pretty cool village, and we're pretty proud to be a part of it. Thank you. And Wendy and I are going to share some numbers. Okay, well, first of all, it's never too early to start planning, so mark your calendar <laughs> for the last Saturday in February in 2017, because we're going to do the same thing again. Um, we had several people through the day that said, well, it's a little slow this year, isn't it? And in fact, no, it wasn't. Uh, this was our biggest year ever. We saw 520 <coughs> individuals come through. That compares to 429 last year, so almost 100 people more were seen yesterday, um, which is a wonderful thing. And because of some changes that some of our eye doctors suggested and some of our committee members suggested, it actually flowed very, very well. Um, I'm excited that out of that, 520 individuals served and 143 new families that had never been to the health fair. And that always excites me because it's not the same people we're seeing over and over. We're reaching out, reaching farther out, and seeing new people all the time. Majority of those from Floyd County, but we also stretched across many counties outside of ours, which was great. We had 162 volunteers. That's why it seemed so smooth, because we had more volunteers than we've ever had before. That's in comparison to 123 last year. So 40 volunteers more, which helps everything move much, much easier, and we appreciate that. But also, some of the important changes that we had this year, we had six volunteer eye doctors. We had six volunteer dentists. We had Dr. McAllister and Dr. Vaughn who closed their practice and brought their entire practice, their entire chiropractic practice, and set up in one of our Sunday school classrooms. So they were all here as well, as well as all of us. But we had lots of professionals that gave their time. We had 300 plus or minus, that's a, that's a technical number, uh, in the vision clinic, we gave out about 300 yellow cards, which is the card that they use to get into the vision clinic. Because there was never any waiting, we don't think very many people uh, turned away without using that card and coming over here. And we did not turn away one person from the vision clinic, and that's the first time in eight years that we've been able to accept and see every single person that wanted vision treatment. So that was a great thing. We did 130 haircuts, way up from any other year, um, 81 chiropractic exams, 80 plus dental exams. We saw 284 individuals uh, in the closed closet and we gave away over 1,100 items. Um, so we had so many wonderful stories and so much expansion yesterday, and yet it really, really flowed very well, and it was because all of you. I, uh, we had a couple of reporters here, and I said to one of them, on an average Sunday, 
We have about 150 people worshiping, and I'm looking back there, and I think that says 133, 132, 133 from last week. Last, yeah, that's last week. We had 162 people volunteering. This is an all-hands-on-deck project. This has become a project that this whole congregation embraces, and we couldn't be proud of it. Thank you.
Mr. and Mrs. class. Do you guys know which room that is? The, the room we used to play games in for logos? Do you know what it was? It was a little health room that they gave shots to people, like flu shots, or they told them about things to be healthy. So that room was definitely not a playroom like we use it, throwing balls and running around. It was way different yesterday. And the chapel where we have worship sometimes and some Sunday school class, Sunday school class meets in there. Do you know what was going on in there? They had a dentist place in there where the dentist could check your teeth. Even your uncle was in there checking people's teeth. Did you know that? Uncle Todd was in there checking teeth. And seeing your same dentist. And did you know that the adult choir room that these guys practice in, they don't really play very much. Do you look at them? Do they look like they play a lot? Yeah. It was a play room. <laughs> it was a play room yesterday. It was not a singing room. It was a room that they played and acted crazy, and all kids your age were in there. And do you know what's going on in our nursery that's normally where the kids are? Tons of people were giving haircuts. There were eight hairdressers, and so it was like going into a little hair salon. So each room in our building was changed into something totally different than what we normally use it for. It was not the same as what it normally is. And it took all these people out here a lot of time to make those changes. And I want to ask you guys a question. This is a very important question. I want to see if you guys know why in the world would we do all of this work, give away so many things to all these people that we don't know? Why in the world would we have a health fair where we, we spend days working on it and over 500 people need to get stuff for free? Why would we do that? What do you think? To help people who are poor? Yes. What do you think? To be kind and help people? What else? To, to do what God calls us to do and help others? Yes. So we as a church decided about over eight years ago that it was our job as a church to help people in our community and a little bit farther and that we would do this. And so a ton of our folks do that for other people and we don't ask for a thing in return. And that's what I want you guys to, to learn from what happened here yesterday is that we offer so many things to other people without asking them to do anything for us. We just want to make our community a better place and a healthier place for all those around us. And we feel called by God to do that. And so you guys remember that, that our church is a place to do that. And each one of us has a job to do that kind of thing. And we want to thank all these people sitting out here for teaching us that. Okay, let's go home. Thank you. You ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Thank you! Okay, let's say our prayer and then we'll, like we'll go back to this. Dear God, thank you for all the people in our church who teach us to help others. Thank you for all that we have and all that we're able to give. Amen. Good job, guys. Let's go back to our seats. Let's walk. Remember, choir's about to sing baby or something, and they don't have fun. Right? <laughs> Just kidding, choir.
I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast and sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to all the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know how you shall run, how they shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts, and my thoughts more than yours.
are those 18 who were killed when the tower of Solomon fell on them. Do you think that there were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come down looking for fruit on this fig tree, and I still find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put more manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Today's message of hope and challenge, reclaiming conversation, will now be given by the Reverend Dr. John Manzo. <coughs>
They deserved it. And Jesus is saying, no, they were no worse than anybody else. All people are sinners, and all people need all people need to repent. And all people need to stay away from judging other people. One of the most recurring themes in the Bible is judging other people. Over and over again, we are told to not judge other people. And the reason we are told this is often a reason that makes us want to cringe. We are taught that we are not to judge because we ourselves are not good enough. We ourselves are not righteous enough. We ourselves are not worthy enough to ever judge other people. It's so easy to see what other people do wrong. It is much harder to repent and change ourselves. So to repent is to change our ways. And, at the, and that is what is at the core of conversion, is changing how, changing our ways. <coughs> the second thing is, conversion acknowledges the holiness of God. And the word holy and holiness is often an abstract word in Christianity. But the word holy literally means other. It is a reminder that God is other than us. God is different from us. In Isaiah, Isaiah writes about God, My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. The ways of heaven are higher. In short, the ways of heaven and of God are different from ours. It's a reminder that God is holy. God is other than us. I'll give you an example. We all like to ponder the idea of love. And we all think about loving one another unconditionally. Whether we can admit it or not, it is really difficult, maybe impossible for human beings to love other people unconditionally. Because there are always things that get in our way. We're imperfect. We just cannot totally give ourselves to another and love them without some sort of condition or actions that take place. But God loves unconditionally. We can't do that. And it reminds us, it reminds us that God is different from us. An early church leader, Augustine, was once accosted by a heathen who, told, who showed him as this idol and said, here is my God. Where is your God? And Augustine replied, I cannot show you my God because there is no God to show. Not because there is no God to show, but because you do not have the eyes to see God. We need to realize we see God with the eyes of our heart. And it's the eyes of the heart that is able to recognize God as other. Augustine was saying God is other. God is holy. God is different. We, are, we need to embrace that. The last thing is Jesus ends up talking to this man about a fig tree and the man's frustration with the tree that had not yet borne fruit. And Jesus' wisdom to the man was this, give the tree more time. Conversion, real conversion, takes time. We may have a moment of discovering God in our lives and turning our lives over to God and making a decision to follow God. But really doing it requires time. Many point to the conversion of St. Paul and say this is an instant conversion. And yes, that is true because he turned his way, turned his path to Jesus. But what people often miss is after that moment, there is a significant amount of time before Paul preaches to other people. He spent a significant amount of time not preaching and not teaching, but spending time with others who taught them about God. And if you read the letters of Paul, you will find there is a change in what Paul is saying. In 1 Corinthians, Paul talks about a man who has now taken his stepmother as his wife. And he is just angry at this. And he tells the people in the church of Corinth, throw them out of the church. They are terrible. They are heinous sinners. Throw them out of the church. But years later, he writes another letter we call 2 Corinthians. And Paul reflects.
text on this. And he said, you know, the guy I told you to throw out some time back, bring him back because I was realizing being in the church is what people need. Paul changed. He changed his mind because he had matured in his faith. And conversion, real conversion, having a really strong relationship with God requires time. It is like something that simmers for a long time. We cannot microwave faith. It takes a lifetime. All that brings me to where I really wanted to go, because all this talk about conversion makes me want to address something really important. Yesterday, we served 520 people. And it was an intense day. Serving people in that way is a very intense kind of ministry. Over the years, I've been, as a minister, I've dealt with intense, intense things and people living through intense life experiences. I've walked with people through illness, through death, through divorce, through a lot of life's issues. But I'm not the only person who does ministry at St. Mark's. Yesterday was a prime example. And yesterday, people who work had very intense ministry experiences. And it's not new to us because every week when we make food for people in the soup kitchen and serve them meals, those are intense experiences. Every week when people go through the clothing or give away clothing in the clothes closet, it's an intense experience. Mission trips are intense experiences. Teaching Sunday school is an intense experience. If you've ever taught a Sunday school class, trust me, it's an intense experience. Being a youth leader is an intense experience. Cable parents and logos are have intense experiences. Choir directors, organists, staff members all do intense things. All those who work with logos or Sunday school or youth group or worship experience intense experiences. Trust me, preaching on every Sunday is an intense experience. Ministry, no matter what form it takes, no matter what we do, is intense. And conversion teaches us something to be very aware of. It is not what we do that defines our faith, but it's actually what we are. What takes place here in this building, what takes place here when we worship, when we sing, when we pray, when we ponder the word of God, what takes place here and what takes place when we go home and read our Bibles or we take time to pray is the fuel that feeds everything we do over there. Without what, happen, without, what, without what happens in this building, what happens in that building cannot take place. What happens in that building cannot take place, cannot exist without the faith that is in here. You notice the two words I keep saying to everybody all the time? Show up! You ever hear me say that? Show up! The reason I say that is because what happens here, what happens in this space, what is happening right now, is the fuel that feeds everything else we do. Because ministry is that intense, no matter how we do that ministry. And that is why living a life of ongoing conversion is so important. It is the faith and the fuel that feeds us. Is the faith and the fuel that drives us. Without prayer, without worship, without focusing on God all the time we are doing whatever we do, we will run out of fuel and not be able to do that much. So there it is. We're invited to change, to grow, to repent. We're invited to see and embrace the holiness and the otherness the awesomeness of God. We are challenged to recognize that this is a growing experience over our whole lives. 
This is really what the story of faith is all about. A faith that, not, that cannot grow and change the lives of others if it is not a faith that is not growing within, within us and changing our lives, living lives of ongoing conversion. Amen. Um, my prayer is going to be different this morning from the way um, we usually do it. Um, I'm going to pray for our needs and some joys um, and not ask anybody because I've been about a whole list of people from yesterday. Um, but I'd like to, I'd like us to pray, if you need to pray for Kate Newbanks, um, Tanya McGowan, um, to pray for joy and celebration of Carolyn Mason is back. It's good to see you. Um, Walter Ryan had surgery at Floyd Memorial Hospital. Um, we pray for the family of Dr. Uh, Galloway. Um, you, you've noticed in the news that uh, Laura Buckingham has been in the news. Laura has been um, is somebody who many of us in the church um, know very well and, and um, care for a lot. Um, she's a person who has uh, on numerous occasions for communion and soup kitchen. Um, she has donated bread and different items to us. She's donated um, clothing to us. Um, she's somebody that we're all connected with. Um, I don't even know what to pray for in this, but just pray for her. You know, and I pray that nobody nobody was injured in this or, or wounded or killed. Just pray for her. Um, Joyce. Well, the health fair served 520 people yesterday, 162 volunteers. Um, I would like to ask anybody who helped work with the health fair or donated any items to please stand up. Or raise your hand. I mean, seriously? This is a joy! So many people, you may reach your hand up and pat yourself on the back. Great job. Thank you. Um, I am thrilled with uh, Joy and Wendy. I mean, the job they do is amazing. Uh, I'm so happy. Carol Flissbart took a picture of me that looked good. Which is, I mean, <laughs> miracles abound. Teresa asked us to 
pray for her family and good health. I pray that my bad dreams will go away. Please pray for Mike's health and her surgeries and for Bonnie and Max, who has two much for Corey, for Bethany, for Courtney, Jamie, and Michelle all go over at times. Please pray for Michael for good health and Bobby who's in bad health. For Amy, the healing process for my head injury. For my legs and body. The roller, the roller and napkin. Um, I ask for prayer for my son. Um, Sipa doesn't how doesn't do much, doesn't pray much, but I pray for his wife and daughter. God help them a lot. So many people, so many needs, and, and there's so much heartbreak that takes place. And there are so many stories that could have been told about so many people yesterday. So I'm going to invite everyone to pray in silence. We pray our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. With tired bodies and joyful hearts, let us share generously with God who shares so generously with us.
do the things you've created us to do now, not later. While yesterday's health fair was our most recent now, we need to remember that you blessed us each day, and as Wendy said earlier, now is the time to find more ways to bless others. Amen. And let us commission one another. We call forth a challenge to be merciful. Let us live, O oh God, in your steadfast love, knowing that our plans are our own shortcomings. Oh Lord. Create us clean hearts and renew our spirits within us. Restore us to the joy of your salvation and sustain us with those spirits. We sing number 40 in our praise and worship. 